Okay, here we have 3.4. So now that we have quadratics out of the way, we can go to higher exponents and get into what are called polynomial functions. So some of the basic things we need to know are, we know about x and we know about x cubed, but now with, and now they're throwing in x to the fifth. And the same ap, um, information applies to x to any odd exponent. So it's graphs of ax to the n, and this first set is for when n is odd. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, so on and so forth, okay? Um, the graph above has odd degree and is an odd function exhibiting symmetry about the y-axis. So here's the y-axis, and it has um, symmetry... Um, oh, it's not supposed to be y-axis. It's supposed to be symmetry about the origin. Now, we don't ever cover symmetry, so that part is really not that important. But it just basically means if I take what's in quadrant 1 and I flip it over the x-axis, and then I flip it over the y-axis, it'll land on the other half of itself. Um, the rest of the sentences says each has domain of negative infinity to infinity because they go left forever and right forever, and each has a range of negative infinity to infinity since they do go down forever and then up forever. Um, the functions are increasing on the entire domain. Um, odd functions all do that, okay? So they'll increase on the entire domain. Um, and then it says appearing as though they are falling to the left and rising to the right. So it's going downward to the left and then it's going upward to the right. Um, now we have another part where it talks about what happens if n is even, okay? And in this case, you have a 2, a 4, or a 6 exponent. And so look, they all look like parabolas, except these are a little bit wider at the bottom, okay? Now it says each graph has even degree and is an even function exhibiting symmetry about the y-axis. Um, each has a domain negative infinity to infinity, but restricted range um, a zero to infinity, and then yeah, because they only have they go down to zero and then up to infinity. And even functions are also continuous on their entire domain. However, they are decreasing on the first half and then increasing on the second half, and it appears as though they're rising on both ends. So the both ends are going up. Okay. Now let's see what we have for the next bit of information. So the next bit of information says, unless otherwise restricted, the domain of a polynomial is the set of real numbers, which in interval notation is negative infinity to infinity. The range of an odd degree is also negative infinity to infinity. And the range of a even degree um, will be negative infinity to k if it's going downward or if it's going upward it will be from that k value to infinity. So that would have definitely come in handy when we were doing the quadratic um, equations because um, then I would know what my range would have been just knowing what the vertex is. Um, but better late than never, right? Okay. So now we have get into what's called the behavior at zeros. So before we've always had x-intercepts and for lines when you have an x-intercept you cross right through the x-intercept and then for um, a polynomial, I mean not a polynomial, a quadratic, it depended. If your x-intercepts were like this then you went through that x-intercept and you went through that x-intercept but if you happen to have a parabola that just touched the x-axis like this then um, it had a different kind of behavior at the x-axis. So there's crossing. This is if it touches, it would look like my image up there, or if the parabola was going downward and it's touching the x-axis, it would look like this. It could also wiggle, like the cubic function, right? The cubic function could be shifted over and it could look like this, and then like this. There's a little wiggle going on in there. That would actually be this top kind of wiggle. Um, and then if the if it's reflected over, then it would do the other kind of wiggle. 
So um, there's three different kinds of behavior, crossing, bouncing, and wiggling. And then there's what's called, a, uh, what makes it do that is the multiplicity. And what that means is once you have your polynomial in its factored form, you're gonna have x minus a, x minus b, x minus c, so on and so forth. This is gonna have like a one, a two, and a three, right? If it has an exponent of one, that's multiplicity of one equals one, and that's what makes it cross. If it has a multiplicity of two, four, six, eight, anything that is even, it is going to bounce off of that particular x um, intersect. Now, if they ever ask you for the lowest possible degree, well, what's the lowest even number? The lowest even number is going to be two. And then here the graph crosses and is tangent to this if it's odd multiplicity greater than one, meaning if it's three or five or seven and so forth, okay? And so what's the lowest of all of those? It would be three. Now, I don't think that we're going to get into zeros that have multiplicities of 4 and 5 and 6 and 7. So for the most part, if you remember, crosses has multiplicity of 1, bounces has multiplicity of 2, and wiggles have multiplicity of 3, you should be set as far as um, behavior at a zero. Now, another type of behavior that we want to know about is um, the end behavior. Right? Was it going up on both sides? Is it going down on one side and up on the other side? What does the end behavior look like? And then another concept here is called turning points. So you're going to be graphing parabolas and they're going to be like these wavy little things that look like something like that. And so turning points would be like where the little vertexes are. So in a parabola, you only have one vertex, right? Um, in a cubic, depending on what it looks like, it could look like this, and you've got two turning points, okay? There is a way to know how many turning points you'll have, or at least the most number of turning points that you have, because a cubic could look like this, but could also look like this. And in that case, there's no little hump or little, no hill and no valley, right? So you can't, you don't have any turning points in a regular cubic equation. Um, so it really has at most n minus one turning points. So this particular function, since I have one, two, three, four, it would actually have to be an x to the fifth or higher. It could be an x to the sixth or an x to the seventh or anything like that. But the, the, it would have to be at least five because there are four turning points. Now, that also helps you if you're graphing it. And let's say you're trying to graph an x to the fourth power. If you have all these little wiggles, you have four wiggles, you know that it's the wrong graph because an x to the fourth power should have at most three wiggles or three um, turning points. So um, it kind of helps when you're kind of just looking at your overall picture and trying to decide, does this look right or not? Okay, um, for in behavior, um, this says that if you have an odd degree, it should have this kind of, in behavior. So as x goes to the left, this should be going um, downward. So as x goes to negative infinity, it should be going toward negative infinity, the y value. And then as x goes to the right, the y value should be going to positive infinity. So as x goes to infinity, the y value is going to positive infinity. But if that um, has a negative in the front, right, where your a is negative, then what you're talking about is it's gonna flip it. So now going to the left, it's gonna be going upward. So as x goes to negative infinity, it's going to positive infinity. And as my x go values go to the right, as x goes to positive infinity, my y value is now going down to negative infinity. But normally we just use these little images to illustrate. We don't use this verbiage here. We just use the images, okay? So that's what the ends will be doing. Now, even though I know what the ends would be doing, I still need more information to know what's happening in between those ends, right? Um, so here we have, um, for even degree, they kind of look like parabolas. So yeah, there's something going on here. There might be a bunch of wiggling going on, but um, it should be going up on both ends if your coefficient is positive 
and if your coefficient is negative then it should be going down on both ends. So here it says determining the end behavior and then use the symbols for the end behavior. So they don't want all that verbiage x goes to infinity all that stuff. They just want the little picture. So how do you decide which one to use when I have x to the fourth x squared x to the one and then x to the zero. You always have to just look at the term with the highest exponent. So in this case, I'm only looking at x to the negative, or negative x to the four. So the four is even, and the coefficient here is negative, okay? Which means it should be negative, means it's gonna be a downward, and even means it's going to have this in behavior, okay? If you want to summarize, like for a note sheet, this is what I would do for my summary. I would say a positive ax to the odd looks like this. A negative ax to the odd, a negative a value, will go in the other direction. A positive x, or positive value, right, positive coefficient, so positive a x to the even will do this and then a negative coefficient but x to the even will do this and so you just have that as your shortcut um, for your values so here notice I have a negative a value it's actually a negative one but I have an even so I have a negative a value and an even which means it's going to be going forward like that now for part B, the highest guy is this one. So this one's got a one in the front, positive, and x to the cube. So that's a positive x to the odd. A positive x to the odd should have that in behavior. Now we look at this one. This is the term with the highest, so negative x to the fifth. That's actually a negative x to the odd. And negative x to the odd should be looking like that. And then finally, the last one, this is the one with the highest exponent, and that is a positive x to the even, which means it should be going upward on both ends. And don't fill in the middle because we don't know what's happening there in the middle, at least not yet. Okay, now I'm going to cover the graphing techniques box, but I definitely want to start another video to try to graph one because it does take quite a bit of effort and it's a little bit lengthy. So it says, um, to graph a fun the polynomial function, you have to find three things. One, all the real zeros of f corresponding, which are actually x-intercepts. So find all the zeros, that'll give you all the x-intercepts. Um, then find the y-intercept by plugging in zero for x, and then use the in-behavior information the multiplicity information on the x-intercepts, so the behavior at the x-intercepts, and then if you need any extra points, like if you have hump, uh, hills and valleys, you might need to get uh, the y values on those so you know how high up and how low they go. Um, and then once you have all that information, all those points, you can graph the, connect the little curve and graph it, okay? Um, so let's, let me stop here and then I'll come back and we'll start this example.